Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. And you find Ross, Widget and me today in the wonderful village of Winchcombe. We're out on the western escarpment of the Cotswolds, looking at one, what is quite clearly one of the most beautiful towns in the whole area. Some of you will remember that we've been here before. A few years ago, we, we were followed Evans into Winchcombe from uh, Stanway. Then we came up the high street as far as the pub, uh, where we stopped and had a coffee. We never made it as far as this amazing church, which has a fantastic story to tell. We're going to show you around, tell you a little bit about the history, and then we're going to take you a little bit deeper into the dim distant past when there was an abbey, a huge abbey, just behind this church, um, which was of course sacked at the time of Henry VIII. Come with me. We're returning to film a little more about a town we visited before. Partly because we missed lots of lovely things the first time round, but also because this wonderful medieval town, the home of the Anglo-Saxon kings of Mercia, the centre of wonderful legends of deceit and villainy, is the perfect starting off point for your journey along the western escarpment of the Cotswolds to Broadway. When we first came here, we were following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, our trusted 19th century friend and guide, and I for one found myself rather falling for this beautiful ancient town. He led us to approach it uphill from the north, and we only managed to get as far as the pub. There may be a lesson there about our priorities. However, it meant we never got to the Church of St Peter that stands proudly on the hill opposite Sudley Castle. Topped by its enormous gilded wooden cockerel, brought in 1874 all the way from St Mary Redcliffe in Bristol. St Peter's is not a hugely elaborate church, but a dignified building in the perpendicular style, its remodelling dating from around 1460 to 70. When you enter the building, the first thing that hits you is the busy atmosphere. There's almost always a volunteer on duty to show you round the treasures to be found in the church and to give you a rundown on its history. There are so many churches in the area that have a feeling of desolation about them despite their beauty that it's refreshing to meet such enthusiasm. They will show you the ancient altar cloth made up of priests' copes from around 1380, reassembled as an altar cloth in the early 16th century, which shows the pomegranate badge of Catherine of Aragon, the pretty wine-glass-shaped pulpit of around 1895, and the chandelier donated in 1753 and made locally. The stained glass is impressive with some 15th century fragments, a terrific east window from about 1885 by Hardman, and two early 19th century figures in the North Clerestory brought from Sudley Castle in 1878. At the back of the church is a model built recently to give an idea of the enormous scale of the monastery and abbey that used to sit behind this church, but was entirely destroyed at the dissolution. This story we told last time we visited. Outside the church, there are some wonderful gargoyles, some of which are probably comical representations of the master masons who carved them, and others, more clearly, of the church benefactors from the family at Sudley. On the eastern wall, there are some poignant reminders of the instability of our society, frighteningly relevant today. There are bullet scars in the stonework, remnants of the street fighting that took place here during the Civil War. Nothing changes. <laughs> 